Almost like the flashpoint, where it starts, one of the key matrix lines that will help shatter this status centralized. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another edition of Flashpoint Radio. It is Tuesday, June 12th, 2012. Thank you for joining me. I am your host, Jay-Z, and I have, as always, a ton of news to get to. I want to see if I can do this in the allotted 15 or less minutes. So let's get right to it. 16 stories for you to peruse, please. Don't think of this as a way for you to get around doing your own research. Think of this as a jumping off point for you to uh, research for yourself and to make sure what I'm saying is true, what Alex Jones is saying is true, what other people are saying is true. Uh, Make up your own mind, your own decisions, your own opinions. We are all individuals and we have to claim our individuality and that means being bold in stating our opinions and knowing what we're talking about. I'm going to give you a leg up on those that are brain dead watching the tube all night long or sports or movies or whatever they're wasting their time with. Let's get started though with one of our favorite topics here on Flashpoint Radio and that would be drones. From the Washington Times, border agency overextended on drone program. The Homeland Security Department ordered so many drones it can't keep them all flying. In a blunt assessment, investigators said Customs and Border Protection's Office of Air and Marine has a fleet of nine unmanned aircraft systems and is awaiting a tenth, though it doesn't have enough ground support and doesn't have a good plan for prioritizing missions. So yes, they have ten. Or nine awaiting ten. And they can't handle that. But Congress wants 30,000 flying above your head by 2020. Yeah, I'm sure they can handle all of that. And there won't be any mistakes or breaches in your privacy. But, you know, at least you'll be able to see them. And, you know, maybe you won't from the L.A. Times. Pentagon to soon deploy pint-sized but lethal switchblade drones. Don't you love the term switchblade drones? These are drones that have explosives tied to the nose, and they're the size of a radio-controlled airplane, and they can kill one or two people to prevent collateral damage. Of course, these will only be used overseas and in Afghanistan and the Middle East. They'd never be used against uh, domestic threats, would they? Who knows? But when you look at some other stories, you question that statement. From the UK, Mail Online. Man, it sucks that I have to get so much of our news about America from the British press, but we do it. U.S. government to use drones the size of golf balls to spy on American citizens. Not American citizens overseas, but American citizens at home. Um, In a 30-page memorandum issued by President Barack Obama's Secretary of the Air Force, Michael Donnelly, on April 23rd, it stated that the drones, some as small as golf balls, may be used domestically to to collect information about U.S. persons. Ah, the love that your government has for you. That they'll put drones in the sky to keep you safe. But are they safe? Nothing can ever go wrong, right? I mean, these are trained professionals that would never wait a minute maybe they from wboc 16 out of maryland this doesn't jive with the safety of drones unmanned navy aircraft crashes in maryland a u.s navy drone crashed early monday afternoon in a marshy area on maryland's eastern shore this drone was 44 foot long actually in the same article it states that it was uh 100 feet long But uh, 44 feet long, that's a big drone. That crashes, that's going to hurt some people. But it's the government, so, you know, they have qualified immunity. You can't sue them. Uh, It's all in the process of keeping you safe. But it's not just the government or the military or police that is watching you. It is also the government surrogates, those Tech companies that were set up by the government, i.e. Google and Apple, look at where they got their seed money. Look at where their heads came from. Again, from the Mail Online, Daily Mail, 
Beware the spy in the sky after those street view snoopers. Google and Apple use planes that can film you sunbathing in your back garden. Software giants will use military-grade cameras to take powerful satellite images. Produce aerial maps so detailed they can show objects just four inches wide. Yes. Yes. Where do you think they got the military-grade cameras? From companies that the military paid to develop military-grade cameras. With your tax dollars to be used militarily and then given to private corporations and private companies to use to spy on you. Yes, because why? They want to sell your data. It's not anything but your data because it is valuable to them. Why? Because you think it's valuable. Because you fall for the advertising gimmicks they throw at you on the internet. Facebook, all of the apps, all of the pop-ups. Stop clicking on them and maybe they'll stop data mining. What other reasons could they be data mining? And is it just Google that's spying on us? No. From ProPublica, journalism in the public interest, how Microsoft and Yahoo are selling politicians access to you. Yes, they're selling your information to political campaigns. The web giants provide users no notification that their information is being used for political targeting. Yes, the politicians and those campaigns that are run by your funds taxpayer-funded campaigns are paying private corporations for information on you so they can target you with political ads. Ah, that's so great. That's so great. So great. So who's going to warn you that, uh, you know, you're being spied on or you're being watched or your information is being used by governments? Maybe, wait a minute, Google? No, that doesn't make any sense. Google to warn users targeted by state-sponsored attacks from Foreign Policy Magazine? Google to warn users? That doesn't make any sense. It states that Google's going to start sending you email notifications that you are being targeted by a sovereign state. I read the article, and it says nowhere, it specifically states nowhere that they're talking about one country, but I guarantee they won't announce to you when the United States government is spying on you. No, no, it's just for China and Russia and India and Iran and all of the countries that our, uh, that our money elite, our power elite don't like. But our government? Well, we just went over. They're spying on you out in the open. It's not a secret. And Google's not telling you about that, are they? I bet they won't. Let's, let's put a bet on it that Google's not going to keep our government in check. Why? Because they were paid for by InQtel. The CIA funded the startup for Google. Search it. Find out for yourself. Moving right along from privacy to, oh, the new scourge, the new, the new drug, the new Al-Qaeda that you need to be worried about, basalts from CBS Miami. Basalts may be behind naked man confronting girl in park. Um... A naked man exposed his genitalia to a four-year, three-year-old girl in a park. One thing that was funny about where this park was from this article, it states, the bizarre incident unfolded in, unfolded in the tot lot that is located literally in the backyard of the North Miami Beach Police Department. The child and her mother walked up and this gentleman was lying naked on a bench. He had obviously already been there naked and he's in the backyard of a police station. Hmm. Then he gets up and he, you know, makes advances at this person and they scream and the police come. And what do the police blame it on? Not the fact that they let this man sleep in their backyard. No. This gentleman, uh, quote, I don't have police, I don't have a name for this quote, but it, uh, the police detective said, quote, in his wallet was what appeared to be basalts. What appeared to to be basalts. Is this the extent of our forensic testing? Is this the CSI going on in the real world? Is a, a, a police officer says, well, it looked like basalts. So yeah, it's basalts. Why don't you just test it? You can't test to see if it's basalts? No, you just say it is and the media just runs with it. The Drudge Report puts an article up saying a man attacked a three-year-old girl while on basalts. Sorry, Matt Drudge, but that is a misleading headline. When in actuality, Information like that, this 
does not get reported from CBS Miami as well regarding the uh, Causeway Cannibal from three weeks ago. Uh, this, they released a uh, photo of the gentleman who got his face eaten off. Uh, one little bit that I thought was funny was the doctors decided to say how much he was a Miami Heat fan and that he said, quote, go Heat. This is uh, Mr. Popo, the homeless man that was eaten, said yes. He's really worried about the, or he's in, interested in the NBA Finals, which just happened to start tonight and involved the Miami Heat. And this gentleman decided to say, go Heat. And they decided to report it. But the little bit that you need to get out of this article is this. Um, Randy Eugene, the gentleman that was shot and killed while attacking the man, an autopsy revealed that Eugene had a number of undigested pills in his stomach. Hmm. Bath salts aren't undigested pills. But they said... The screening will take a couple of months to complete to find the full toxicology report. So after it's out of the news media, then we'll get the truth. Then we'll find out that it was Xanax or Prozac in his stomach that caused him to do this. And not bath salts. Bath salts may have been partly responsible, but I guarantee it was the mixture of bath salts and prescription medication. And finally, to finish on an article that deals with the same issue of pharmaceuticals from msnbc.com. Crackdown on painkiller abuse fuels new wave of heroin addiction. Yes. Holly Yeh started using painkillers in the ninth grade at parties and hanging out with friends. The pills were everywhere, easy to get and cheap. By the time she was 18, she was abusing oxycodone, Percocet, and other pills every day. Then they stopped being enough, and her cousin introduced her to heroin. And she states, the first time I shot it up, it was like, quote, where has this been all my life? Yes, yes. They start with prescription pain medications prescribed by criminal doctors who don't get charged with any of these crimes, get addicted to them, they wear off, the efficacy wears off, and they have to move to harder drugs, i.e. heroin. Kind of like the same way you get people off heroin. You put them on a stronger drug to wean them off heroin. Sounds like a good method, don't you? So t ask yourself this question, all of you anti-marijuana people out there. What is the real gateway drug in this world? What is the real gateway drug in this country? Is it marijuana? A plant that has grown since plants were created by God? Or maybe it's pills designed by pharmaceutical companies to make profits and to keep you sick so you have to keep coming back for more pills. There is nothing Christian about taking pills. There is nothing Christian about taking Percocet instead of cannabis. Get it through your head. The government said cannabis is illegal. The government said prescription painkillers are okay. What's leading to heroin addiction that is a scourge on especially affluent West County families in this state or this city, St. Louis? Yeah, prescription pain meds. It ain't marijuana that is sending these kids to heroin. It's prescription pills. If they're in your cabinet, guess what? Your kids know they're in your cabinet. Maybe you should know what's in your cabinet and what the real effects are on you and those little children that are probably going to steal them from you and sell them to your friends at your West County High School or your private school. Yeah, it ain't cannabis, my friends. Cannabis ain't the problem. It's man. And guess what? Man did not invent cannabis sativa, but man invented Percocet. Jay-Z, signing off. Come back tomorrow and see me. I've got a lot of specials on the same topic, health and newborn children. You're going to like it. The information's good. God bless. Keep your eyes to the sky. I will see you next time. Swallow our planets.